68% of client relationships break down over misunderstandings about scope and expectations. That's a staggering number. What's going on here? My name is Emily Bender. I'm the founder of Wealth Voice and Beetle Moment Marketing. I've been doing marketing as a consultant, essentially a boutique agency for about seven years now. I have clients. We have scopes of work. Wealth Voice is different because that's a SaaS, so you're paying for a monthly service. No questions asked, very clear. When it comes to consulting, though, that's when the scope thing really comes into play. And if you're in any business where you're doing a scope of work for a client, people will have misunderstandings unless the expectations are very clear. If you're a consultant or a freelancer, even if you're navigating your workload in a nine to five, it's really an art and uh, you have to balance flexibility with firmness. The way I approach it is I allow minimal scope creep. Sometimes this is where the art comes into play. You have to feel people out and decide if this client is somebody who understands this is out of scope, it's a favor, it's goodwill, and it always comes back karmically. You, you ideally have somewhat of a karmic contract after the real contract. With some people more than others, this always is the case. The key is at the beginning with a contract, you really want to be extremely clear about what you're signing up to do. The misconception, and this happens oftentimes when you have a really good relationship with a client, they tend to lean on you but if you're not full time, if it's not a retainer where it's like, call me all day, any day, the experience that I've had is most clients are very understanding when it comes to, oh, that's outside scope. Okay, no problem. Didn't mean to overstep. You have some clients who expect you to go the extra mile. And once in a while, it is a good thing to do. But my tip, if you are a consultant, a coach, an advisor, if you're doing work that has a retainer or a scope, when you do something that's extra, let them know in a friendly, positive way. This was outside scope, but we were happy to throw it in. I'm so excited to see the results. In fact, here's a screenshot, look at the chart. Something like that goes a long way. It's very inappropriate for clients to continually ask for things that are outside scope unless they're saying, just bill me, I'm willing to pay for it. Another mistake that I've seen people make, and you guys know I don't like hourly billing. I, I don't like to do the barista, babysitter, dog walker style of business, which is like an hourly rate. The only place where I have hourly rates is on coaching calls, consulting calls, because these are a specific tool to let somebody in the door who maybe needs just 30 or 60 minutes, or you could buy a pack of five. But other than that, I really never give an hourly rate or break out anything I do hourly because the value of the work you're doing has nothing to do with how long it takes you to get it done. Ideally, you're very efficient and you do things quickly. Some days, you're not at your best, right? So if you think about the four agreements, always do your best. Be impeccable with your word. Some days your best is not as good as other days. You might be tired. You might be sick. So a one hour of work on October 20th could look very different than an hour of work on October 22nd. It's so variable. We're human. We're not machines. So hourly work. Hmm. I understand why attorneys and some professions have to bill hourly, but I'm not a fan. In my line of work, it's a turnoff. Do you make money or earn money? They're very different. And a lot of people confuse the two, interchange the two, but they're, they're totally different. So earning money is, let's say, you have a cap to your potential earnings. If you're an employee, most of the time you have a cap, right? So baristas, dog walkers, babysitters, attorneys, anyone that has an hourly rate is earning money. If you have a business or a product or something that you've created and there's no ceiling or cap on how much you could make, you're generating, producing, creating, that is making money. You're creating something. Earning, there's a ceiling. How many hours are there in a day? You have an hourly rate or a salary? Ask yourself, do you want to make money or earn money? Ask somebody that you're dating. You want to get to know somebody really well? Do you make money or earn money? See what they say. Yeah, you're always playing with pricing and it's what will the market bear? What's the value? What's the time savings or the cost savings that you're giving to somebody? So when it comes to scope creep, I had a few tips that I wrote down for you guys. You want to avoid the trap of over delivering for many months and then suddenly saying, hey, actually everything we did was out of scope. Let's say you didn't charge enough in the first place and you keep over delivering. Stop. Stop as soon as you feel like, ooh, I messed up on that. 
I should have charged more. This is turning out to be a lot more work and much more valuable than what I charged. This happens a lot of the time early on when you're just starting. Nobody ever wants to agree to pay an amount of money, think they're getting a good deal, and then for someone to say a few months later, actually, I undercharged you. I have to make it more. That's terrible. Like Try to avoid that at all costs. It's the equivalent of, let's say that you told your spouse you would always pick up their dry cleaning on the way home from work and you do it for years. And then suddenly you can't take it anymore because it's such an annoying thing that you're doing this favor and it's rush hour, you're hungry, it's a detour to get the dry cleaning. And then you say, I've been picking up your dry cleaning for years and I just can't do this anymore. And the spouse is like, I didn't know it was such a big deal. You offered to do it. I, don't worry about it. It's similar with consulting. Flexibility is your friend, but clear boundaries are your ally. If you are selling your IP, you're not making widgets, you're not making cookies, but it's your thoughts. The woman who designed the city, C-I-T-I -I logo, I forget her name, but I'll put it in the video if I can find it. She was once asked, how long did it take you to design this logo? And she said, 30 seconds plus 30 years of experience. So when it comes to scope creep, if you're on the client side, you need to keep in mind that you're hiring somebody who is not your full-time employee, unless you're on a really expensive retainer where they're at your beck and call. But if they're on a scope, you could say, this is something we'd love to do. Is that in scope? It's a polite question. It's respectful. If I gave things away for free all the time, like I do comps, I do bonuses, I do nice things for my clients. I don't charge. I pepper them in. I, I do them when it feels right and when that's in balance. But if I were to just do that all the time and I never said, just letting you know that was out of scope, but we threw it in for you. We're so excited to continue the project. If I kept doing it for free and I never let them know it was comped, they would think it was part of the whole package. And then when I didn't do it anymore, they'd be like, well, what happened to the extra videos you were doing? It's not a good strategy. People are so uncomfortable about money. Like it's the number one taboo thing in our country. It's much more taboo than sex. It's actually the number two leading cause of divorce after infidelity. It's money disagreements. You know what else? Usually when you're asking somebody to pay you, it's not out of their own pocket. It's coming from a business, which they may or may not even own. I allow minimal scope creep, depending on the client relationship, sometimes more than other times. But when it gets to the point where it's something that's really high value, I, I don't do that for free. I say, I'd be happy to do this. Here's a scope for that. It's like if you go to a grocery store and you buy a cart full of groceries and then you're on your way out and you see the cacti or the potted flowers outside the store and you already paid and you just throw it in your cart. You're like, oh, I just spent 200 bucks at their store. I'm sure I can just grab a $4 cactus. It's illegal. You probably shouldn't do that. But it's similar with, well, I already spent this much. I'm just going to grab cactus, just a little extra. And it's not the same because you're not grabbing something. You're asking them to do it, but it's the same principle. So watch out for scope creep, whether you're on the client side or the provider side. There's an art to managing it and having just clear, firm boundaries, but being polite and collaborative, of course, always helps. You would go out of business if you give your product away for free. I mean, it simply comes down to that. But when you're such a stickler for, well, that's not in scope. If you do it the wrong way, then it's a turnoff because then people feel nickel and dimed. And we almost don't want to be reminded that that's what we're operating off of. If you guys have any questions about scope creep, leave them in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, remember, Voice Marketing with Emily Binder is on YouTube and Spotify and Apple and everywhere you get your podcasts. All the links to rate, review, and subscribe are at emilybinder.com slash podcast. Please do leave a five-star rating on Spotify. It takes two seconds. Just go to Voice Marketing with Emily Binder on Spotify homepage, and then you will tap the five-star icon, right? It takes... It's a tap. You don't have to write anything. Five stars, boom, right there on Spotify. So easy. I would really appreciate it. All right. I'll talk with you guys next time.